I intend on extending a tax cut for those families of $6,000, which is the largest child tax credit that we have given in a long time. My plan is to give a $50,000 tax deduction to start up small businesses, knowing they are part of the backbone of America's economy. My opponent, on the other hand, his plan is to do what he has done before, which is to provide a tax cut for billionaires and big corporations, which will result in $5 trillion to America's deficit. My opponent has a plan that I call the Trump's sales tax, which would be a 20% tax on everyday goods that you rely on to get through the month. Well, I have no sales tax. That's an incorrect statement. She knows that. Uh, we're doing tariffs on other countries. She doesn't have a plan. She copied Biden's plan, and it's like four sentences, like run, spot, run. Four sentences that are just, oh, we'll try and lower taxes. She doesn't have a plan. Well, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris sparring over their tax and tariff policy plans during the ABC News presidential debate last night. Joining me now is Missouri Congressman Jason Smith. He is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. Chairman Smith, it's great to have you here this morning and your initial reaction to the debate last night. You know, I... I... I believe looking at the debate last night, you saw very clearly that Vice President Harris is just going to be a second term of the Joe Biden administration. She is the vice president of that current administration. She was the the tie-breaking vote on two very big pieces of legislation that destroyed our economy. The American Rescue Plan, she was a tie-breaking vote. The Inflation Reduction Act, which led to the cost of living crisis going up more than 20.1 percent under the their watch, costing every American uh, more to put food on their table, clothes on their backs, and gasoline in their cars. And those policies are not the policies that the American people is looking forward to. And she wasn't able to separate herself yesterday from an economy that has the highest interest rates in 23 years, where we've seen real wages decrease by 3.9 percent under her watch. And then, of course, we've seen a border that has just been absolutely porous. We're looking at the markets this morning, Congressman, and certainly, uh, Chairman, excuse me, you We've got the Dow down 123 right now, and, and some of this is because investors are looking to what could be the tax policy under a Harris administration. Uh, many say that, that they believe that she uh, baited former President Trump and did well last night, and, and she was well-spoken and well-prepared. Don't want to debate that with you, but the Trump tax cuts are set to expire uh, at the end of 2025 unless there's action from Congress. And one senior economist at the Tax Foundation says if the tax cuts and the JOBS Act does expire, 62 percent of taxpayers would see their tax bills go up because it's provided tax cuts to a vast majority of taxpayers. So she's elected president I in November. She's promised that she's going to extend uh, the, the, the tax cuts for those earning under 4000 But remember, she wants to take the corporate tax wage 28%, or it could go higher. I mean, these are all things that investors are looking at, sir. Your reaction? She supports full repeal of the Trump tax cut. She has said that numerous times. The Biden-Harris budget proposal every year for the last four years has completely um, repealed the Trump tax cuts. That will mean not 62 or 63 percent of Americans will face a tax increase. A hundred percent of Americans will face a tax, tax increase because every individual rate Every single individual rate goes up. The guaranteed deduction, which 91 percent of Americans use to file their taxes, that gets slashed in half. That affects 91 percent of Americans immediately. The child tax credit, which she, she says she supports, it gets slashed in half. Seventy percent. 70% of all the expirations are on people who make less than $500,000 a year. So if she is holding true that she's not going to raise taxes on people making less than $400,000, then she needs to stop saying she wants to repeal the Trump tax cuts. Now, Chairman Smith, I do want to talk to you about what the House Ways and Means Committee uh, is doing to ensure that the Trump tax cuts don't expire next year. That's number one. Uh, and then I do want to get to the business of the day with the continuing CR. But real quick, what can your committee do 
And, and, and so we've we, been, we're, you're still you're still at work <laughs> until absolutely we we've been traveling all over the country listening to real Americans, real farmers, real small business owners, real working moms of the issues that they're facing in today's economy. I've set up ten different tax teams that have had more than seventy meetings in seventeen different states because we want a tax package that addresses the needs of real Americans, not lobbyists in Washington D.C. Okay, okay. Well, we will look for that and look for that work. I do want to ask you about this. Obviously, it's a big day on Capitol. Hill, the House is going to hold this final vote today on Speaker Johnson's plan to tie the SAVE Act to the CR to fund the government for six more months, a avoid a partial government shutdown. Two House GOP lawmakers did vote against the procedural hurdle yesterday. There's, there's a slim four-seat majority here. Republicans are going to need, likely, the help of some Democrats to pass this. Pass this. Look, it would help secure the upcoming election if it was in included, the SAVE Act, prevents non-citizens from voting. But Speaker Johnson did join me on this program uh, last hour to discuss it. And I want you to listen to what he told me about this. We have to do a resolution to keep the government going. We attach the SAVE Act to it because the SAVE Act simply says that states have to have proof of citizenship from someone before they sign up to participate in the election. This is a serious problem. We have races in Congress, in the House, that are decided by tiny margins. We have about 16 million illegals who have come across that border since border czar Harris opened it up with Joe Biden. If just a small percentage of them participate in this election, they can throw House races, they can upset the majority here, they might even determine the outcome of the presidential. Okay, so former President Trump wrote on Truth Social that if Republicans, quote, don't get absolute assurances on election security, they should in no way, shape, or form go forward with the CR. He called instead for a government shutdown. We had Austin, uh, Congressman Austin Scott on in the six o'clock hour. He says he thinks that the, you will lose the House if there's a shutdown. It's really hard to understand why any single American or any single Democrat would vote against legislation that says that only U.S. citizens will vote in U.S. elections. And this is an issue because just in Washington, D.C., they allow non-citizens to vote. That should alarm anyone. You can have folks from another um, country's embassy voting in the Washington, D.C. area, which is absolutely unacceptable. We should not shut down government. We will not shut down government. It will be funded. But I would hope to think that Democrats should join us and to think that non-citizens should not be voting in our elections. But maybe, maybe that is why Vice President Harris has allowed 21 million people more than the population of the state of New York to illegally cross the southern border. Maybe that's how they're going to try to win elections. Yeah, well, uh, certainly there's going to be a lot at stake today. We're going to be watching that vote very carefully, uh, Chairman. Chairman Jason Smith, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you.